everyone welcome back to my channel H&E Life my name is Dr. Cindy Wong I am a practicing GI pathologist and today after much requests from you the audience I am going to cover the resources for pathology residency in terms of what textbooks to get, what textbooks you actually need to buy, and what are some online resources that you can use. All right, so let's just get started. Here's a list of resources I've generated based off my own personal preference of books I've liked using, as well as what I've heard from my old co-residents in which they liked for their own subspecialty. This list is not the grand list of all resources you can use. These are just examples of books or resources that people have found helpful in the past. And of course, if you don't like what I list, feel free to get something that is more to your own preference. Let's get started with general pathology resources. If you are a medical student or a very, very fresh PGY1, I will highly recommend the Malavi's book, The Practice of Surgical Pathology, A Beginner's Guide to Diagnostic Process. And this is a really great, very thin, small textbook, if you will even call that, but it basically lists out the most common things you'll see in pathology and is a great resource to learn the fundamentals of pathology as a medical student trying to impress on their rotation or as a PGY1 just trying to figure out where to start. Another very good general resource for pathology residents, AJCC Cancer Staging Manual. This is really, if you're a med student, don't bother with it. I think from here on out, these are all resources geared towards residents and possibly even some fellows. So as a resident, having this AJCC staging manual is useful because in this book, it lists all the things you should look for that would be characterized as pathology staging T1, 2, 3, and so on. It also tells you what are the important things you need to see to give an end staging, which is for the lymph node, as well as for what is defined as a metastasis. Now for PGI-1 residents, if you want a good general resource book, I recommend and don't recommend these textbooks. So the t here, let me just say what they are first. So you have two very common general reference books for intro to pathology. The reference books, one is by Mills and Steinberg, the Diagnostic Surgical Pathology reference book is a two volume book. The other one, very similar in concept, is by Rosa and Ackerman. And while I personally prefer the writing style of Mills and Steinberg because it's more to the point. I remember flipping through a rosai and that it was just too flowery. Like the, the way it's written is more flowery with more fancy words and I just don't like that. So personally, I like the style of the Steinberg's book. Unfortunately, I did buy it as the as a resident as a PGY1 with my book fund and did I read it? No, because it's just too dense. I <laughs> it's 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 a good reference book. It has most entities you want to talk about, but it doesn't cover each in enough depth for my personal preference. And because of course it's an overall reference book for all of pathology, honestly, two volumes probably isn't enough if you want to do like the hardcore reference books. These books are great as a reference book for beginners. Um, no one is going to cite you these books to look for if you're doing subspecialty later on. They're going to always ask you to look at the reference book of their subspecialty. These textbooks are the two textbooks that if you ask any pathology let me rephrase that. If you ask any pathology attending who have been practicing for a while, they'll tell you, get this book and read this, this book series. And as a fresh attending who just gone through residency and fellowship, I would say these two textbooks are a big waste of money. And um, you could have it if you love reading a textbook in paragraph form and you could sit there and study like that, that good for you. These textbooks are for you. If you, if you can't, if you don't have the brain power or the attention span to sit there and read a textbook, these books are probably not going to be that helpful to you. All right, so I talked about some general pathology textbooks you can get. Now, let me talk about some general pathology resources. My number one general pathology resource online is Expert Path. And I 
cannot recommend expert path enough. Lucky for me, when I was a resident and as a fellow, both at University of Chicago and also at Stanford, Expert Path was provided to the trainees for free. It is a subscription service, but it is very, very, very useful resource. If your training residency program or fellowship program doesn't offer it, I recommend buying it because it's just it's just that amazing. It has most of the common diagnoses, even some of the rare ones, and it does a great job summarizing the important things you need to know. Especially the it does a great job of listing the key microscopic the key IHCs, the key molecular testing, the key differential for these entities. And it's summarized. Like when I say summarized, they're bullet points. And I love bullet points. So instead of spending my time studying the Steinberg textbook that I bought when I thought I was going to read it, I end up just using Expert Path almost every day. Every day I will be using Expert Path will be open while I'm previewing because if I had any thoughts about what this might be, I will look it up. And then I will look that entity up and be like, oh, okay, I guess what I'm looking at is not this thing I was thinking of. But then amazingly, it lists all of the differential. Then I'd be like, okay, well, if it's not this, maybe it's one of these. And oftentimes that's probably what it is. And because of that, I think Expert Path is amazing, 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 amazing. <laughs> okay. Um, and of course, I am not sponsored by Expert Path. If I wouldn't say I wouldn't love a sponsorship because I can't, I can't recommend them enough. But <laughs> um, that is one general pathology resource that I think is probably the best. And of course, if you don't want to pay for Expert Path, I would highly recommend using Pathology Outlines. It is a free website and it basically is in the same format as Expert Path. It is written out of basically the kind heart of different attendings, of, you know, across the country. Um, I myself personally have written a chapter in there for gastric adenomas, but it's basically written by fellows and attendings. I think Pathology Allies is doing a really great job. They're, I think they're trying to get more entities out. They're updating constantly. Uh, the reason I wrote my chapter in Gastric Adenome was because before I wrote my chapter, which is now 2022, I think the last time it was updated or the last time it was written was back in like 2012, something like that. So, you know, they, it's not, they don't keep it as up to date as frequently as Expert Path because it's a pay for service and people constantly update that. And you could see, you know, in both resources when the last one was updated. And I think Pathology Outline does a great job for a free resource. And of course, you should definitely check it out as well. All right. So that is the two general online resources that I highly recommend. Now, I'm going to start talking about the subspecialty resources and the subspecialty textbooks that people tend to have. So since I'm a GI pathologist, I am going to start with a GI book. So my recommendations for pathology residents in training, especially if you're AP1 or AP2, or you have no interest in going to GI path whatsoever, I highly recommend the biopsy interpretation series. So the biopsy interpreter series is relatively small, like they're, they're relatively small books. They're, re they're really not that thick. And it's the biopsy interpretation of, they have one of every organ system you could think of. And for GI, they have two, uh, a volume on neoplastic GI and a volume on non-neoplastic GI. Of course, they also have a separate volume on liver. These two books basically have your most common diagnosis and as well is written very simply. It's not flowery at all. It's, it hits the big major points and it has a ton of pictures. I love these books because it has so many pictures. The ratio of pictures to text is skewed towards pictures. Therefore, it's kind of like a, like a picture match book in the sense that if I have a GI biopsy and I don't know what it is, I'll flip it to the section of the, the chapter 
and for example it's a esophageal entity i'll flip to esophagus and i'll just start flipping through the book and be like hey i think my thing looks like this read the subtitle of what the of the thing is and most likely the case that is the entity of the diagnosis that i'm trying to make so that's why i love these books and the biopsy interpretation series is not only good for gi you'll see i recommend them i recommend them over and over again all right if you are thinking of doing a gi fellowship or gi is something that you really enjoy doing i highly recommend that you get the ozzy and goldblum surgical pathology for the gi track and for the liver biliary tree and pancreas this is a reference textbook it is one thick thick book as a resident this is something that i i don't think is a good book to learn from because it is a true reference book i would definitely recommend the smaller biopsy interpretation series for you if you're just a resident trying to learn all right if you are also very serious about going to gi for fellowship or practicing i also highly recommend that you get the who blue book for the gi track it, it lists every who recognized neoplastic and malignant entity and honestly i feel like the who blue book is great for any subspecialty i feel like if you're practicing subspecialized then you're definitely going to need this book but as a resident do you need it no you don't uh, i will recommend you wait to figure out what subspecialty you want to do and buy the blue book for your own subspecialty and then the last one there is a reference book just for the liver on its own if you want to learn about reference book for liver pathology i highly recommend the mcsween's pathology of the liver this is the textbook that dr hart recommended and it is a reference book just on liver pathology so if you really want to do a fellowship and you want to practice gi and practice liver these are the big reference textbooks I recommend. All right, so that's it for GI and I'm going to have a similar list but much shorter because I don't practice the other stuff for other subspecialties, but here we go. Let's just do these real quick. If you are a resident and you want to read up a book about breast, I highly recommend the biopsy interpretation series for breast. It is probably one of the most recommended most recommended textbook in the biopsy interpretation series because it just does such a great job with the breast and with like i said lots of pictures so it is one of the things that people always recommend and that was basically my breast bible for residency let's move on to soft tissue i really enjoyed the patterns recognition series on soft tissue pathology this textbook it hits the key points it's written well it's a more concise way and i this is the book i liked now for the gynae track my good friend who just finished her gynae fellowship the one she recommends is the diagnostic pathology series the gynecologic pathology book this is the one that she thinks does the best job at explaining gyne things and this is the book she recommends and for gu diagnostic pathology series for gu pathology for head and neck also in the same series the diagnostic pathology series for head and neck so these are also very very good as well for each of these individual for gyne gu head and neck and soft tissue biopsy interpretation series does offer a small book on it so if you wanted something that wasn't so thick and more to the point i always recommend getting the biopsy interpretation series but if you want a bigger more referency looking book then the pattern recognition series is really good not only for soft tissue but it's also really good for renal for medical renal the pattern recognition series is very good for that as well and the diagnostic pathology series you really can't go wrong with buying any of the books in this series so for cytopathology there is a book fang fang and cytopathology review this is not a textbook this is a very thin little question book for cyto cytology and honestly i feel like if you're a resident who have no interest in cytology but you just want to learn enough to pass your boards this is probably enough i loved it it was it's great it has great explanations the picture quality for this little workbook is great and i think knowing this and learning what you learn at sign out is probably enough for you to pass your board for cytology of course if you want to learn more about cytology there's always the book by sebus which is the cytology diagnostic principles and clinical correlates that is recommended by most cytopathologists that i know but like i said this was recommended to me i never bought it i didn't like it it was too wordy so i like the short and easy question book by fang fang and now 
In terms of autopsies, if you want to know a little bit more, learn more about property autopsy techniques, also learn a little bit more about forensics, a great textbook is the Autopsy Pathology uh, Manual and Atlas. This book was really good. I did buy it. I really liked it. It has some great charts in it for weights for organs and what's normal and it's great and i i highly highly recommend this if you're interested in autopsy if you're interested in forensics as a starter beginner guide and i think that covers most of the subspecialties within surgical pathology and uh that's really all i can recommend in terms for cp textbooks uh i really don't know <laughs> maybe um in the future i can look into releasing a list of cp resources all right so i've talked a lot this is a lot of materials once again i'm gonna write all the materials i've talked about down below in the description and i'll try to put links towards where you could buy some of these textbooks and i hope you find this very helpful if you have any recommendations for research i didn't cover please leave that as a comment down below it's always great to share this information and also please if you like my channel please like and subscribe and leave comments down below you know i always get inspiration for videos from these comments just like how i got inspiration for this video so please come on just keep writing the comments down below and that's it for me today and i hope to see everyone next time Bye!